Well, if you've heard me say this before, please bear with me, okay? But Jim Harbaugh, wherever he goes, he wins. It's that simple. San Diego State, he won. San Francisco 49ers, of course, in the NFL, got them to the Super Bowl just a few years ago. And, of course, his major college jobs, he's won. Stanford got them to a major bowl game and had one hell of a run. And entering year number three at Michigan, he's already not only posted back-to-back double-digit winning seasons, but he also got the Wolverines to a major bowl last year, the Orange Bowl, and another top ten recruiting class. So you know Michigan is going to be in real good shape for years to come. But for Mr. Harbaugh, 2017 could be his biggest coaching challenge yet because he has to replace 17 starters. Wow. Now, on our previews, team-by-team previews, we're going to have a did you know before we break down the offensive defense. Did you know that Michigan had 11 players picked in last year's NFL draft? That's the most of any Wolverine team in school history. Considering that Michigan is the winningest team in college football history and has the winning percentage amongst any FBS school, they haven't been playing football a long time, that is one heck of a statistic. 11 players for Michigan last year drafted. Let's look at Michigan's offense and what they do have coming back. Of course, the quarterback, Wilton Spate, he's a veteran. He last year had a modest 2016, 18 touchdown passes, only seven interceptions, and threw for over 2,500 yards. Now, two things going against Wilton, though. Number one, last year in the money games, he didn't always play his best. In fact, he had two costly interceptions against Ohio State and did not play his best against Florida State. Both of them, of course, were losses at the end of the season. Another thing, too, he's going to have some new primary targets to throw to. He lost his top three receivers. Again, Michigan, you know, decimated uh, by the NFL draft by graduation. Yeah, it's going to be, in some ways, a new Michigan team, but they hope to keep that balance tech going because you got to replace Jake Butt, the all-everything tight end. But this is a spot where I think the Wolverines will be okay because you got a guy with experience coming back, Ian Bunting, um, and also Tyrone Wheatley, Jr., who will share that tight end spot. So experience-wise, it's not going to be too far of a drop-off. However, receiving-wise, Michigan's going to have to prove themselves all over again. Okay, That means that Eddie McDoom will see what he can do at wide receiver and also the one-time uh, five-star recruit out of high school, Donovan Peoples-Jones. So if these guys can live up to expectations, Michigan should be just fine in trying to keep that balance. The ground game... That's a little more solidified. Chris Evans, even though he only had 600 yards a year ago, did average seven yards per carry. So more of an opportunity for him to show what he can do. And offensive line, left side you don't have to worry about. As a matter of fact, the left tackle returns in uh, Mason Cole. He's a senior. And a guy that impressed last year as a freshman and got to start, Ben Bredesen. Bredesen, now entering his sophomore year, will play the left guard position. But the Wolverines... We'll be looking for some new starting blood at center and on the right side of the line. A year ago, the Wolverines, 213 yards rushing per game, 212 yards passing per game. Can't get much more balanced than that. Wolverines a year ago were the number one offense in the Big Ten. And defensively, they were the number one defense in the country, only giving up 262 yards per game. That's total. Okay, That's amazing. Biggest reason? In my opinion, that defensive line was incredible. Now, problem, though, is that you don't have Taco Charlton anymore, the defensive end. He's making the big bucks as he was a top-round pick by the Dallas Cowboys. So defensive end, Rashad Gary. I know you've heard this guy two years ago, number one high school player in the country. And he did work into the rotation last year as a freshman, but on a limited basis. But now, obviously, he'll get a lot more PT. And speaking of playing time, defensive tackle, uh, that's Maurice Hurst. NFL scouts already love this guy. So defensive line-wise may not be too bad a shape for the maize and blue. A year ago, 46 sacks for that crew. Did one heck of a job. Now, linebacker, not as experienced there. Mike McCray, the only linebacker and the only full-time starter back for Michigan. Yeah, again, the uh, numbers just took a toll on Michigan entering this year. So McCray at weak side, but Michigan looking for a middle and strong side linebacker. And the secondary, well, all of them have to be replaced. So it looks like Michigan will be going with as many as three sophomores starting in the secondary. Of course, you got to replace Jabril Peppers, you know, who was drafted as a safety, also in the first round of the draft. And the big thing for the Wolverines, even though your secondary is going to be fairly raw, and even though it was number one in the country last year in um, – passing defense, 
Wolverines don't have to worry about facing a passing attack the first five games of the year. Of course, Florida is the opener, and the Gators aren't really known for passing. It's not until game number six at Indiana when you go against a team that loves to throw the ball. So maybe that'll be enough time for the Wolverines secondary to get acclimated. And in terms of special teams, you know, like I said, Jabril Peppers is a big loss because, you know, he also returned punts and he was very, very dangerous. Okay. And so now it looks like Eddie McDoom, the receiver, he'll get his shot at returning uh, punts. And by the way, you lose Kenny Allen, your kicker and punter. And it looks like Michigan will be going with a couple of freshmen to fill in those spots, respectively. Looking at that schedule, we mentioned the Florida opener. It's in Arlington, Texas. The Wolverines, I think, still, despite the fact they got a lot of players to replace, I think in a low-scoring game, will have still have a good shot at pulling up that Week One victory. And that could be a tone setter because if Michigan can beat Florida, Wolverines could very well be six and zero, provided they can get past Michigan State in that road game at Indiana. Six and zero, perhaps facing an undefeated Penn State team, the defending Big Ten champions. Remember, Michigan humiliated Penn State last year, but that was during game number four. And then after that, Penn State lost. The Nittany Lions ran the regular season table, including beating Ohio State and beating Wisconsin in the Big Ten championship game. Um, so, you know, Penn State has been thinking about that game for a while. At the end of the year, you got a couple of potential roadblocks at Wisconsin in what last year was a low-scoring game, Michigan won it 14-7. And, of course, their big-time nemesis from Columbus, Ohio, the Buckeyes have absolutely owned this robbery. But this year, at least, Michigan gets to play the game at the big house. Now, another segment that you're going to be seeing on this show, Vegas win total. The projection that Las Vegas has for a team as far as regular season wins. Vegas says that Michigan's going to win nine. Do I think that's too high, too low, or just about right? I think, actually... It's just about right, nine. On one hand, Harbaugh does have enough young talent to where they can get acclimated as the season progresses. Remember, Michigan's real tough part of the schedule isn't until later in the year, so the youngsters will have some valuable experience and should be in a little bit better shape, especially when they play at Penn State and then later in the year at Wisconsin and against the Buckeyes. But on the other hand, it is a lot of players to replace and the tough games against Penn State and Wisconsin are both on the road. And until they can find a way to beat Ohio State, I can't pick Michigan to beat the Buckeyes, especially with the talent that Ohio State and Urban Meyer will have uh, this season. This is plentiful. So I think nine wins and a third-place finish in the very difficult Big Ten East Division is just about right. And for Michigan fans, my opinion, 2018 is when I think this team will be extremely loaded, bringing nearly everybody back. That's my look at Michigan. We'll see you next time.